right, construction yeah. champions. It's your host, Ron Newsbaum, and we're here for another amazing episode of Construction Champions Podcast, where we're burning the house down. Man, you think I am losing my voice? I'm about ready to go get on a plane and go to Vegas for the IBS show. And my voice is crackling on the intro for construction champions. But that's besides the point because we're all champions here. We're going to keep rocking and rolling. I have an amazing guest. Stephanie, it is great to have you here today. Thank you so much, Ron. I appreciate it. I think we have a lot to share and to say. I 100% agree with that. I'm super excited to dive into it, but before we do that, why don't you tell all the construction champions out there a little bit about yourself and what got you here to today? So I'm Stephanie Brown, and I founded Intelligent Construction Opportunities, and the reason I founded Construction Opportunities was because I wanted to be the bridge between construction professionals and those that build the, tr the construction technology. I felt that there were gaps between the context and the lack of context that so many construction developers had built on behalf of construction professionals anywhere from the field to the back office, where there was not a solid understanding of the reality and the workflow of the actual tasks that are being performed by your average general contractor. And that's kind of the point of the matter. They aren't general. They are called general, but the point is every project is run a little bit differently than the last one. And so I am here to try and bridge the gap in terms of knowledge, in terms of understanding the application and the language. And most importantly, the construction professionals now have a voice in the future to tell construction technology developers what they want. Mm. that's that's me in a nutshell and i've got over a decade of it consulting uh background i worked in professional developments uh working with microsoft's products and data analytics products cloud networking i was there a little bit before and then after when azure and aws uh came out of the box and sort of changed the entire game from having uh, servers on site, holding all the company's uh, particular data, um, cybersecurity, AI, I'm developing things in the background, which will be coming out to aid what I do as my core service, intelligent construction opportunities. And that is to source, select and implement and help to adopt the technologies that are out there today. So again, I thank you, Ron, for inviting me on. And uh, I saw what Buildercoms is all about, and I'm very excited about your application. Awesome. And I'm very excited about our conversation today because you bring a very unique perspective to all of this and to our million-dollar question. And we're going to dive right in there, and I'm going to ask it, and that is, what makes a construction champion? What makes a construction champion? Well, I always lean back on my holistic idea of why are any of us doing anything in construction. And a construction champion to me is somebody that not only endeavors every day to get better than they were the day before at whatever they do. So that could be a skilled trade. You could be a boiler maker. You could be a bricklayer. You could be name the skilled trade. You could be a site supervisor. You could be a project engineer. You could be a construction manager. Whatever your title is means you want to get better than you were the day before. And that you understand that there's an underlying reason for why you do what you do. And it isn't even just your own paycheck. It is about building and maintaining the infrastructure that all of us rely on as human beings. That's right on point. I say it a lot on here and we have, we talk about it is like being in construction, like it's not just a job or it's not just owning a business like you are responsible for the infrastructure the homes the four walls that people 
have their entire life in. They make all of these memories and we are responsible being in the construction industry for building that, for putting the foundation for people to be able to go out and enjoy their life. Yes, and you are the difference between people being homeless, literally, or not. You are the difference between um, toilets that run effectively and being able to wash your dishes and being able to do your laundry and all the things that we do. And oftentimes I feel that it is lost. And so as a construction technology advisor, I uh, am determined to find the right technologies for the right circumstance, because I don't see technologies any differently than the hand tools or the machinery that is used to create these structures or to maintain these structures. It is an aid in the process to efficiency any more than you wouldn't use um, a, 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 nail, a hammer and a nail today where you could use uh, uh, an actual pneumatic nail done. Yeah. That, that, that is actually the nuance and the difference. And again, you don't use that pneumatic air, air nail gun for every job that you need. When you need a wrench, you don't reach for your, your pneumatic nail gun. Hmm. So that to me is the nuance of the story that we're trying to tell and why, for example, you built your app that is really focused on the communications side of things. So that's, uh, that's kind of, my stance and why I think that that's what makes a construction champion. They understand the micro and the macro and they can bring them back and forth. Now, there are tons and tons of challenges in construction. <laughs> that's where it gets bitter and cold very fast. So yeah, I, I think you're touching on something that's very important in how we look at technology and you know, one of the reasons I built Buildercoms is because construction technology is not necessarily built to be looked at as a tool. I love what you just said, because that was one of my core beliefs when I started building Buildercoms was this has to be just a tool in the tool belt. Like it has to just be something that works with the everyday job site, the off, whoever's utilizing it. And I, and I told the team, like, that's how we have to develop stuff. Like if you're not looking at it as this is a tool. And I think that gets lost, not just in the mindset of the contractors and builders and people in construction, but also the people that are developing the software, they lose sight that what we're trying to do is just build a tool that makes everybody's life easier. That's correct. And so that's why I use the analogies that I do. But if I can flip it on the other side, you you ask what makes a construction champion. That construction champion, I think, has to also take responsibility and, and, and accept the fact that, yes, construction technologists who created technology, now Procore is one of the oldest in the market, and they've been around since the early 2000s, but they needed many, many iterations to get to the tool that they are now. And dare I say marketing, where most guys on a job site will go, oh, I heard of Procore, maybe we should use Procore. And, and the unfortunate, there's, there's an upside to that knowledge, but there's a downside. And that is the assumptive idea that that is the best project management tool for every situation and every contractor size or however many projects they're running, or however many self-performing people they have versus subs and so on and so forth. That is the nuance. So they have to, in my opinion, take a breath, accept our apologies on the on the technology side that that we unfortunately, for various reasons, and mostly to do with money and financing and backing these. Uh, these ventures, these construction technology ventures, that they were feature fixing a lot of them, slapping on pieces that one particular contractor might want, but that, you know, 
the three others behind them didn't need. Um, and so as a result, the guys on the ground, when the GC says download XYZ app, it becomes just another app on their phone that has too many clicks has too much of an estranged way to understand how to even use the interface and likely interrupts the flow of how they are currently producing the work that they do with their hands every day. Um, you know, it's funny, I, I for better or for worse, I, I watch a lot of HGTV shows and granted that everything is all fast forward and everything looks pretty and it's all done in the editing and everything looks like, oh yeah, we just put up this trestle and we built this beam and oh, there was a leak over there, no worry. Cut to commercial, we come back and miraculously there's not a problem with that plumbing issue anymore. Um, but we still know that, that it takes a human being to make those corrections. And that means time and that means decision. And that often means money. So again, the closer we can get to what people like yourselves are doing now building this application, you happen to have a construction background to what is the reality on the site, the better in the future, we are going to build apps that are more like tools. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And so I guess I, my question would be is because we had a lot of listeners that are in a lot of different stages of business. But you know what I hear all the time is like, I've tried this, I'm trying this, I'm doing this. And I just feel like I have a lot. It's an overwhelming feeling when it comes to construction software, to construction technology. What what would you say to those guys that feel overwhelmed? that are, they They don't know what they don't know. Um, well, coincidentally, and not because I'm doing this today, I'm actually working on uh, a little bit of, of what I'm calling a, a kind of an intensive workshop, a couple of days long, which is going to help them to understand the minimum amount of software that they would need to have, and then the, the, the nice to haves. And again, it all it, it's not even a it's not a personal choice. It is more understanding what kind of contractor you work for, what kind of builds you do, how many of them do you do, how many subs do you use on on the regular? Do you have a hard time getting subs, et cetera, that will ask you what applications do you need? What automations are you looking for? that'll change your situation as it is today and how many people have to understand how to use that application. And have you made even the people that aren't using it understand the long-term reason for the data collection, which is kind of what it is. It is, we are trying to, with various applications, whether it's project management application, or an accounting application, or a communications application, or a time card application. At the end of the day, it's data. But even people that sign on the dotted line and purchase software don't even have a strategy for how to use that data, which is another area that I am working to cure for, if you will. Because again, what is the point of all this? Construction, inherently has so many issues today with the shortage in in labor, which I do think technology in some way, shape or form, the right technology can help that gap. But it, it it's many nodes in this network that have to appreciate that if you are gonna be in the construction industry, these are things you're going to bump up against and you have to be, I hate to say it and a lot of, you know, it, it, it's in a lot of business books, but you have to, you have to be part of the solution. You cannot continually show up as somebody that resents the fact that it's sometimes a screw up, you know, sometimes the most illogical lack of common sense situations happen on the everyday construction site. 
but we have to do a better job collectively, each of us to hold whatever piece of the construction ecosystem and understand that if you are going to be a construction champion and if you take pride in your work, that's what has to happen because you can change what your situation is, whether it's your career path or whether it's, you know, being legitimately valid to get a raise or whatever it is that you want today, tomorrow. But you have to kind of be mature and accept your responsibility as a part of the ecosystem. And that means you can't just go, all technology's bad, screw it, piss it. I've, you know, I, I downloaded this, I downloaded that. They're all the same, big, broad brush. Let me just, you know, throw water over all of it. I'm not using any of it. Because it's, it, it is not, it's not going to help the situation because there are lots of use cases out there where good technology like builder comps has helped to make a difference. Now, I spoke to somebody the other day and it was interesting because they mentioned that they feel that sometimes technology on the site is interfering with the all important culture that happens in construction. And I, and I do think that's true. I do think that can be true in anything. I mean, I also worked in offices in, in a certain amount of time in my career. And I can tell you how easy it was to send somebody who's sitting right beside you an email instead of turning to them. And you can't, I don't think, I don't think a, a, a society will function, will function right um, if that's the case. Um, and I, so therefore, I think it's just absolutely vital, absolutely vital that, uh, that we keep the human element in it. So, um, you know, that's, that, that's what I'd have to say. Um, it's, a uh, human first, culture first, tech next. Well, I, I think one of the misunderstandings with technology is like it's going to remove that human element see i'm not i'm not for that aspect i think you're always going to have that human element involved i think it's about learning how do we work alongside the technology like with all the the stuff that's happening with ai and all the automations out there is like it's not about not having to be involved it's about figuring out how does this just make me better like, how can we come to other, me and the technology, and I just become a better service provider because of it, instead of looking at it as, oh, this is just going to do everything. I think that's the lazy way to look at technology, because you're still going to have to work at it. You are still going to have to work at it, but that's where I think people like yourself and myself come in to it, um, because I think it's really important that we that we make sure that, you know, you, uh, that we're filling in these gray areas, I'm gonna call them. You know, the gray areas where we actually have to help and aid and teach. And, and it doesn't have to be formal teaching, right? It doesn't, if, but we, we still have to, there has to be other support systems out there that are culturally, on their side, if you will, without without looking for some sort of direct payoff or something that is not going to, it's, I guess it's like the news. It's like, you know, some people, we consume our news, right? But nobody makes us consume certain news articles. We are drawn to or interested by certain things we're interested in. And it is it's just important for me to understand the nuances and what it, what ingredients are there in what what does a boiler maker do in in the day of life you know like I, I have to understand that myself in order to have the respect of the boiler maker so that the boiler maker understands that I get it you don't like 
the technology component, but where could you tell us in, in technology where we could drive efficiencies? You still need to report to work every day. You still want to be paid on time every day. So that would say to me, if we had a digital time card for you to be able to do that, so that when you reach the site, you just hit boop and, you know, you're in and, and the back office knows when you got there. Um, you know, you, you, the safety measures that keep you safe on the job. That should be something that you ask your employer before you even start. You know, but that's those are the things that we we need to help push along and aid. It's the big picture. We're, what is your role? Do we understand your role? And how could you help us to understand your role better in relation to technology? That's it. I mean, I don't know about you, but I mean, you know, chat GPT is now, I would say, ubiquitous. There's not... There's not any industry and probably very few individuals now, if they are, you know, sitting in front of a screen in some way, shape or form on their phone or on uh, on an iPad or, you know, a desktop that hasn't some had some sort of precursory interest in checking it out. Well, I can tell you that because I am a technologist and I keep my hand hand on the uh, on the fire every day so to speak i can already see emails and even texts where they've used the recycled language of chat gpt in their subject lines in the bodies of their email and how they name what they're doing and it's becoming a little obvious to me that we've already been too reliant on what they spit out for the sake of efficiency. So again, it's taking away the, I'll say the context, just like technology to me has been, you know, pro with, with some exception, but, uh, but a lot of technology has been created without the context of the actual workflow of the tasks being done on the job. And that can be the back office too, for that matter. But the same thing in ChatGPT, we've lost the context and the personality of the writer. And, you know, I don't know about you, but I think what happens is people turn off. They just psychologically turn off. It's not even a, a physical action. They just ignore those emails or, or that vendor or that, you know, fill in the blank. Yeah, and I, I think that's where we have to be willing to figure out how do we work with, not against or not fully reliant. Like technology from the beginning has always been made to try to make us more efficient, to, to collect that data, to have these points where instead of using a pad and a pen, you can, you can <laughs> it's amazing what you can do. But we have to not be completely reliant on it because, like you said, what ends up happening is, is it just starts regurgitating that same information, that same data. And what goes in, if it's garbage in, it's garbage out with technology. And I think we get to the point where it's just garbage going in because we become so reliant that we lose. Like it, it, We just think it makes us so much more efficient when there's still stuff that has to be done. You just can't hand it all off and just be like, man, I have this software, everything's good. You still have to monitor it. It's just like you were doing it before, but you're using a system or you're using some kind of software that now allows you to be a lot more efficient at it. Well, if you want to take it down to simple terms, I mean, now you don't have to find a pen and a paper and you don't have to worry about where you put the pen and the paper because it's digitally stored somewhere. Hmm. And that's why the details are just as important. But as far as construction is concerned, I think where a lot of technology went wrong initially was they just, because they were designed by people that use keyboards, they thought it was a typing thing. And only, and, and, and only until you can make a, a an interface that is more click 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 and that's the end of it the same way you would you know sign your name with a pen that was two seconds 
you know, check a few boxes, write in a few details. That was it. It has to be the same time of consumption on the on the work site to actually get those digital inputs in. But I think what's missing in here is the what's in it for them. And I I am not the biggest subscriber to coffee cards and and awards like that. I mean, perhaps it drives some people, but I think it could have a negative effect um, on um, sim treating people simplistically as though they should be rewarded, you know, like a dog with a cookie, so to speak, for having put in the digital inputs. I think you have to take it down to a much more professional level. And I don't think we're there yet, but I can tell you, I am having conversations with people to try and guide the next steps in that. And also I think there's been a disconnect from a, for a long time between all the levels of management and also where they feel um, they have power over the next level down, I'll call it. I also think that has been a huge hit and miss. And also, which has been, in my opinion, part of the reason that we do have the labor shortage is because of the mistreatment and the disrespect and the things that have driven um, like simple things to me, like um, porta potties uh, should not be a thing, but the fact that they are a thing, I I, I point my fingers squarely at, at the person that is funding this building, at the entity that's funding this building and anybody at a management level that would allow a lack of toilet paper to be a thing. Like to me, that's just the most obnoxious obnoxious miss by the back office. Um, again, if you're going to, and, and I'm an animal lover, so I, I say this very carefully, if you're going to treat humans like animals and, and you do that day in and day out over the, over, the, over the length of their career, you're going to get all sorts of vitriol in various ways and reasons. And as it relates to technology, then they just broad brush anything that comes from the back office. I agree. So with porta pot, that is a that is an interesting point of subject because I now I live in North Carolina where it's it's mandated. Like if you pour a permit, you have to put a porta john on that job site, no matter what you're doing. So like any construction project you go around to here, there's porta johns. I came from Michigan. Well, that's not mandated. Now, it's something we did for any project that was a week long. Uh, we would do that because homeowners are just, you no, know, it's whatever. You know, we had projects that range different different amounts of time. So it's something we had started doing. But it was funny when I moved down here to see, like, it's not up to the company. Like, if you want to pour the permit, you're going to have a port john sitting out front of that property before you start anything and i thought that was pretty amazing well so here's the thing so i would say yes it's great that it's federally mandated uh I, i'm assuming you're saying north the north state of north carolina has mandated that versus the yeah. state of so do we really need to have government intervention to do that i that's what i mean this is where we've lost our minds this is why I say at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I'm not sure who's picking up the bill for the toilet paper, literally, but I do say that uh, somebody better figure out how to amateurize the cost of the toilet paper so that it's there and stop being so juvenile about about the need for it and the cleanliness of it and 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 all of that. And I just I, I think it is absolutely atrocious that we can function as a society and be so damn selfish about basic things. So getting back to what we were saying at the top of the call, what makes a construction champion is somebody that understands that his job is a microcosm in, in the bigger idea of infrastructure. I would say to people that foot bills and pay for buildings and so on and so forth, you just might as well build in a contingency toilet paper and get over yourself <laughs> uh, no but I, i'm you know and this stuff needs to be called out because mm -hmm. the more that we perpetuated 
it spills over into other areas that maybe in certain areas of technology, just as an example, shouldn't have a broad brush. But if you're already angry because you had to use some portageon that's filthy inside and and so on and so forth, and you come out without sleeves for whatever the reason, then you have already put somebody in a bad state of mind to go back to their place on the job to finish X, Y, Z job. And that resentment just builds up and builds up and builds up and builds up. So that affects eventually the labor shortage. It's like, take your glasses off people. It's like, your decisions are not made in just a little narrow box. I absolutely agree. I mean, I think you're you're bringing up topics that definitely have to be addressed uh, across the board in the construction industry. So I love it. It's It's been a great episode. I mean, it's been a great an eye opener on a lot of different lovers here. So for all the construction champions out there, if they wanted to connect with you, follow you, learn more about what you're doing, where's the best place for them to go do that? LinkedIn. I am. I, I run live streams myself to bring up these issues in and around the ideas of technology. So I have construction technology and construction professionals participate with me to have these conversations. Um, but they can reach me on LinkedIn uh, at Stephanie Brown um, and just put in intelligent construction opportunities. You should be able to find me fairly readily. Uh, my website is intelops.com. That's uh, short and fir form. Um, unfortunately, I wanted to name my company this, uh, but again, technology doesn't like it uh, because they only give me a certain number of characters. So I'm intelops, that's I-N-T-E-L-L-O-P -L -L as in Paul, ops, that's plural, intelops.com. And uh, that is my website. And uh, I also have uh, a, a starting of a YouTube channel where I store some of the live streams right now, but I am working now to strategically develop a way for people to find those live streams and to actually utilize the information that's been imparted in them. So that's my YouTube channel of Intelligent Construction Opportunities as well. Awesome. And those links will all be in the show notes for everybody. And Stephanie, thank you for taking the time and being on Construction Champions podcast today. Well, I love I love the cause, Ron. I love that you are a construction professional that built an application that, in my view, is a tool. And it's a good tool. And it's a tool that's been built from a knowing construction professional. So thank you for this opportunity. Awesome. Thank you. And Construction Champions, that's another episode in the bag where we talked about what is a construction champion when it comes to the use of technology. Stephanie brings a lot of great value and points to this conversation about how it's just a tool. It's just like when you went from using a hammer to using a nail gun. Did you fight and scream and kick? I mean, okay, so I bring that. Some of you guys did, okay? I've been on the job site with you, and you were like, I'm just going to use my hammer. I don't need that air gun. It's going to cause too much problems. And then next thing you know, you got the air gun going, and then the cordless ones came out. And a battery operated. And no, the, it, the, see how that stuff has advanced and how it has made your job better because you just utilize it as a tool. You didn't look at it as something that's impeding on what you're trying to do or your end result that you're trying to create. You learn to work with it, work alongside of it. Technology is the same way. And as we head into 2024 here, we're in 20, it's almost the first quarter of 2024 is going to be over before a blink of an eye. What are you doing to start bringing this technology into your business that is growing rapidly. Businesses can only scale so far. You can only do so much with your pad and a pen. And if you keep the old mindset of technology is not designed to be 
or torn my business, then you're looking at it from the wrong perspective and you're going to get taken out of your market. I, I, I have a lot of great conversations with a lot of amazing people. And this week I've had a couple that surrounded private equity in what, and we've all seen it. We know what they're doing in the construction industry. They're buying it up. And what are they doing? They're implementing technologies that they have to make the businesses streamline. And they're starting to dominate territories because of that. And if you think you're going to be able to compete Without starting to figure out what technologies work best for you, I love when Stephanie talks about, I come in and I figure out what kind of business you are, so then we can talk about what kind of technology you need. That's how you have to go about this. It's too often what happens is we just go in there and we're like, oh, boom, this is the big a la carte solution. I'm grabbing this one. And then we don't use 75% of it. And then we say it slows us down. And then we don't do anything with it. That's not how this works. There's so many great solutions out there. You have to figure out what works best for your business. So then you use it. So Construction Champions, make sure you go check out constructionchampionspodcast.com. Share our podcast with somebody you have coffee with this morning at that gas station. Tell them they need to go be a construction champion and tell them where they can find Ron Newsbomb. That's pretty much everywhere. So construction champions until next time go be the champion you were meant to be introducing builder comms the construction communication software that's changing the game say goodbye to communication challenges and hello to effortless communication with builder comms you can communicate with clients share pictures videos and documents and keep clients informed about the progress of their projects get real-time updates prevent miscommunications and delays and ensure successful projects don't let bad communication ruin your construction projects. Try BuilderComs today. Visit us at buildercoms.com.